Hi, this is Jeremy, and I wanted to give you a walk around of this Gypsy Bardo trailer that I've been working on for the last oh, almost two years next, next month. Uh, so it's almost ready to go, so it's a good time to give it a full video walkthrough. So this, my goal on this trailer was to build something small and lightweight, uh, following sort of that Gypsy wagon look um, that uh, could be a, a full-on camper, but also could be a studio or some other um, kind of Coachella sort of vehicle. So it's pretty much all wood except for the trailer. And I started on this with a utility trailer uh, that I restored and uh, used that as the platform to build this on. So if you can see from the outside, we've got outriggers on all four corners. So that gives it nice and stable. And we've got a, it's a two by two construction with rigid foam insulation in the walls. So it's nice and and insulated from heat and cold. It's also have insulation in the floor and insulation in the ceiling. Um, I tried to reuse a lot of materials wherever I could. So the windows are restored vintage doors. The wheels are also vintage wheels that have been restored. These doors here are also <laughs> vintage. But a lot of the main construction is new material. We've got a marine grade quarter inch plywood, birch plywood, um, and a lot of cedar trim. and it, uh, Try to keep it looking old school, but it's got a lot of modern construction techniques to keep it really rigid and ready for the road. Just wanted to give you a close up look at the propane tank and how small it is. It's a tiny little guy, it's um, five pounds, so it's really small, but it will last a good long time. Uh, you know, anything that you're going to do with your, your normal 20 pound tank, you could do with, with this one. And you can that's, just pop that off and take it and get it refilled. Yeah, yeah, just undo the strap and it just sits in a little uh, slot there, it'll come right out. So it's easy to refill, or you could even refill it if you go to the uh, RV place, you can refill it right here in, in situ and just take the, uh, uh, the hose off. The wheels are really striking, they're really beautiful. Can you say any more about them? Yeah, so those were a, a late 30s Ford wheel and uh, the dimensions just happened to be the right fit for the trailer wheels that were on here originally. So managed to get uh, two of those out of Tucson. Um, they were in rough shape and got them fixed up. And luckily the hubcaps are still available and uh, had that um, powder coated. And there you go, brand new cat and idle tires on there. And uh, really makes a nice statement with the, the trailer and gives it a sense of character and age. Jeremy, I'm curious about the, the roofing material. Is that a, a common thing on, on trailers or RVs or anything? Or what is it yeah, used this, for? Yeah, this is a um, common RV roofing material. It's a, it's a rubberized polymer, but it's, it's not EPDM. It's, it's a little bit different. Um, but it is commonly used as a solid surface on RV skins, usually the big ones that you see. And uh, it's got a 15-year you know, lifespan at least. Cool. And what's the, I'm really curious, there's a hole and a hook near the back of the trailer. What, what is that? Well, that's actually, you have your uh, lantern hanging from in the back there. So you, you can either put something through the little hole. And the hole is actually more decorative than useful, but you could also hang something from it as well. But the hook there is so you could have your lantern for nighttime use. Because if you had a stove out here or set up a little table, it'd be nice to have a little more light on, on this side. And it may be a little hard to see, but the original, you know, the original trailer base comes up to here, and everything is bolted onto that. And then I've added these extra uh, outriggers that are a cast iron. On the front here, you see we've got another window, another vintage window. We've got a Renology 10 watt or 10 amp solar panel here. Um, all your water storage is right here. Because this is a Gypsy Bardo and they were really more designed to be pulled by a horse at 10 miles an hour rather than on the freeway at 60 miles an hour, we had to add a little bit in here to make it a little more road safe. So we've got an um, anti-sway bar here that attaches to the truck. And then the what reason the water is up here is to keep more water up front. If you get too much in back, you'll uh, induce some sway there too. So this keeps you, you going good. I'll show you real quick too. That these can swing down for easy access. So when you're ready to use your water, you put on a spigot here and you start using it. 
Around the other side it looks most the same, other than way we don't have the uh, propane on this side. And we'll go back around to the compacty here. I've added a few little extra little details back here because somebody told me that if you didn't have these hooks on the back it wasn't a real Vardo because you couldn't hook up your goat. So that's why these are here. Also have an antique brass doorbell. Not really necessary, but it's very cute. I also tried to use uh, some old style hardware here as well for the doors, for these antique doors. Well, let's go inside now and take a look at all the interior pieces. So your countertop and storage really all on the back right of the trailer. So we have this drawer here with a little storage there. More storage here in the cupboard. And then we have an adjustable shelf here. So you can do whatever you want on that. This is the other side of that doorbell we saw on the outside. Also have a few little uh, mounted things for pens, pencils, utensils, whatever you want. A uh, yeah, spice rack area here, more storage up here on the top, the lighting. And then we also have these little towel racks. They're just loose. They can kind of fit anywhere along the edge of the trailer that you want. And then we go to one of our two seats. So it's a really a two-seater on either side. So it's identical on both of these. On top here, we've got the bed. It's an extra long full, which is basically like a, a queen length with a, a full width. So plenty of room for sleeping. Down below, we have storage. And both of these trays will slide out. Here, I can show that to you. Locked in here for travel. So put stuff in there and then roll it out, roll it back in. So they have 54 by 54 inches there, plus you have a little extra storage um, up on the shelf all the way around. Um, we also have our electrical stuff in there, but there's really plenty of room in there for all that kind of thing. Did I hear you say earlier that 54 inches, that that, that could actually be a, a kid's bed space too, if you wanted Yeah, to? you really could if you wanted to take out some of the storage and put a kid mattress in there. Um, that would work out great. You might even be able to make it a bit of a a raised platform one and get a little more more width out of there as long as they weren't uh, too squeamish about space. <laughs> and on this side we got the other uh, seating area. Oh yeah, let me talk about the power too. So we've got a um, power unit here with a standard uh, 12 volt car charger. Also have uh, two USB ports. Um, they're the um, five volt, two amps. We also have uh, another set as part of the uh, solar charger, which is under here. I'll give you another two USB ports. And then you can hook up external power. Uh, and on that um, power strip that's available there, there's another two USB ports. So you got plenty of power for whatever you want to do. And if you can be off grid, we've got plenty of power for that. Uh, but you can also plug in at the, at the campsite. So the, the solar panel, though, connects to a battery that's in the trailer in here somewhere? Yeah, the battery is up on the front in, that, in the uh, box we saw earlier where the water is. Uh, so the solar panel comes on down to that, and then uh, it recharges from there. So all that is sort of up front and out of your way. So you're not going to have any fumes in, or anything inside the trailer. And there's lights on that as well? Is that uh, the... Yeah, the lights are actually on this other side. And uh, just the switch here. So I'm assuming you're probably going to have your head on this side. So we got lights all, we've got four around the outside there. Those are all LED warm white lights. And then here's our stove and oven. We saw the uh, propane tank outside earlier, so that's what that's for. Um, so you've got a two burner stove top and a um, oven that can actually hold a nine by 13 baking pan. How, how, long, um, how long does a, propane, a little propane tank like that last? You know, if you're out there, camping and cooking a couple meals a day like what is yeah I mean you can definitely get a couple weeks out of it um, I actually got the idea for putting this in for some uh, van life people that I saw at Tiny Fest and they were really liking this kind of situation and they didn't really have room for a big propane tank 
So it gives you a lot more than your standard little green tanks you get for camping, uh, and it's refillable, which is nice. I want to talk a little bit about the space inside the trailer. It's, it's based on a five by eight foot floor plan. However, because of the way the sides come out on the Gypsy Bardos and the curb proof, you really have a lot of feeling of space in here. So I'm five foot eight, you have over six and a half feet up here at to the top. So even tall people, this is easy to move around in. You've got more arm space on the sides. So you never really feel like you're, you know, getting in the way of any, anything. Uh, so it really works out well for that. And one other thing I wanted to show you while you're there is we have our slide out table. So that's for the seating on both sides. And the fun thing is here, this was a, well, it was probably recycled twice. I think it was an old door that then was recycled as a pizza parlor signboard. And now it's the table for the Gypsy Vardo. So all three of the windows um, have our top hinge and they have a, a cast iron old style casement type of hardware here. So you can pull it out and get plenty of airflow if you get all the windows open. Uh, and also it is really good for rain too, because even if it's raining, the rain still stays on the outside. <laughs> and they stay good and in, in, uh, sealed for travel. Very secure. Jeremy, you mentioned that um, that you had done some, you know, found wood, the win window frames and some other stuff, but I mean, it is such a beautiful trailer and there's so many, there's such a variety of woods. I'm just wondering if you can tell us a little bit about some of the individual pieces. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's maybe start from the ground on up. Um, we've got a nice oak threshold here. Wanted to make sure that was there for any wetness that does kind of come in as you're coming in and out of the trailer. Um, but that's about the only real oak in here. Um, a lot of the rest is various kinds of, of softer woods. Uh, I did cheat on this floor. This is a <laughs> more of a standard um, modern floor that just because I wanted a little water resistance for coming in and out. Uh, what's been nice though, it has, we've had a very you know rainy year last year and uh, it really had no problems um, with water coming in and out here. I think because we have such a, a, a nice big bow on the um, on the threshold that you just don't get the water in here and the way the water is on the outside. But this is meant to be a kitchen floor. Uh, but we really love the, um, the look of the rustic this that kind of went with the sage colors we were going with elsewhere. Most of the trim that you see along the edges and on the sides of the walls, that's a, a cedar. And then I used a, a, a pine bead board for most of the interior walls. That's the sage green that you see. And then we have a regular pine for a lot of the uh, features that are the, the living features. So um, these are recycled um, from a, actually from our own bedroom. <laughs> Found a way to reuse those, and here was the perfect size, and was able to make the oven closer out of that. Um, you know, all the seats in the bed area. Um, and then on the top, really wanted to have that just be really um, exposed. So this this is um, a white cedar up here. That's a tongue and groove that performs the roof. Um, we do have access to it. We have a little oak strapping here. Um, this is a redwood beam that's sort of your your main spine. And then more uh, of the uh, cedar on the outside. And then on the end caps there on the archways is an aromatic cedar because I wanted to have a little nice smell in here too. So um, that one is just exposed, not covered with anything. So you'll get a little bit of smell. In the wintertime, we don't smell it as much as we have right here, but in the summer, it smells great.